Hey, thanks for joining me. I'm going to show how I do tokens for my D20 play games in this video. These tokens I do to kind of have a little bit of a bevel to them and also to go over the edge of the ring of the token to make them really stand out. So here I have shown my Photoshop settings. You can also use various free software tools to do the same thing. And let's look at here I have tiny and small and medium presets that I use. And the only difference between them is that the small and tiny I use smaller rings for. Let's look at the settings I have. So for the token art itself, I have here on its own layer, and I'm gonna turn off the layer of the ring. It's also got a mask set, so everything outside the mask is clear. And the special effects on the mask is a bevel and emboss. You can see the settings for the bevel and emboss here. This makes it kind of pop out and like it's got some, some depth to it. Okay, then I have the ring layer, and the ring layer has a mask in the inside, such that you can see through it to the token underneath. Let's look at the special effects in the ring. The ring's got several. I have bevel and emboss used on the ring to make it look like it's three-dimensional. You can see the settings there. I use color overlay to give it more of a silvery sheen, just using white for the color. And then for outer glow, to give it a little bit of a glow if it's sitting on top of other tokens. That's those settings. And then this medium black, this is just a tool I use when I'm trying to erase the background that extends over the token when I'm doing that. And the medium name is what I'll add if I have a name to throw on the token. I put the name in the top left so that if combat gets very tight quarters, everything's still readable on all the tokens. All right, let's go over the process I use. So the best tokens to get are PNG tokens with clear backgrounds. That is very useful during overlaps and not having to erase everything in the background. You can still do it with one that's not a PNG, just a little bit more labor intensive. So this one I'm going to demonstrate is a lab, uh, PNG file. I'm going to create a new layer here that's clear with the bucket tool, just paint it white. And with it selected, I'm going to drag on my image. I'm using the uh, Thrycreens from Spelljammer, Spelljammer Adventures. And put my zoom center there, connect height and width, and zoom on in. So you just zoom in to where you like to show it. I generally will have the medium creatures be zoomed in about the mid thigh if they're human size. I have this one a little bit further zoomed out just so I can get the whole hilt of the sword there. Once you got that position, you hit the check mark here, and now I've got this layer. Now I'm going to erase the background over here that I don't want to keep. And when I click it, it'll ask me if I want to rasterize it. And I'll say okay to that, which is what I have to do to erase stuff and work, you know, pixel by pixel on things. Okay, that's set good. Now I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to duplicate it. The duplicate I will use to put on top of the ring, put it up there so it's going to be over the top of the ring, but I'm going to hide it for a second while I take the original and merge it down to the white layer. And then I'm going to take the mask from my old token, drag it up, and the special effects from my old token, drag it up. And there the token will be all done if I don't want any overlap. Now, if I was stopping there, I would have made the head a little bit lower. Now, since I want overlap, I put the head further up. I'm going to turn the overlap on, and that's what it looks like. Now, with tokens, less is often more for overlapping, just to have a couple things highlighted. So to do that, I'm going to click that layer, and I'm going to erase the stuff I don't want to go over the top. So I'm going to take the shield out. There we go, put it down below. I'm going to take his leg, his scabbard. And then for his tabard and his other leg, it gets right next to that sword. So I'm going to zoom in there and I'm going to use this tool. And this is the same tool I'd use if I was dealing with an image with lots more stuff in the background. And I just have to go all the way around and pick the stuff I want to keep. Pretty easy for this image with only this one area I need to erase. Deselect that. And now I have a token that I think is ready. And I think it looks real good. And then uh, if it's a player character, I'll throw a name on there too and save it. Often I'll save it without the name and with the name. Both save as PNG files. So that's the scope of the work in Photoshop. Now let's take a look at how that looks in Roll20. Here's Roll20. I'm playing Gravity by Tabletop Audio, by the way, in the background. Great for derelict ships, for asteroids, and other Spelljammer type encounters. All these tokens, or many of them, I've done using the same techniques. And let me grab the one I just made, drag him in here. He'll come in three by three. So since he's medium, I'll shrink him down to one square. If he was a creature, I'd be done. Um, to indicate that he's an ally of the party, I'll double click on that and I'll add an aura. 0.3 feet radius, this is how far past the square it goes. And circle's good and bright green and save that. 
there we go. So that's how I do tokens. That's the software I use, the settings I use on the tokens. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments below and I'll take a crack at answering them for you. Thank you for watching.